All right, hey folks, my name is Mark Locklear. I am uh, going to be instructor for uh, CSC 15101. This is Java Programming Online. So uh, I like to create a video like this each semester just to welcome students and just uh, we're going to look at some stuff inside Moodle here and uh, just hit a few high points um, about uh, how the course is run and what you need to know. First of all, uh, you can check out all the information up at the top here. A couple important things, um, the Java book files, uh, you'll want to download those. So those are going to do a couple things for you. Number one, um, they are example, what's called example starts uh, for, for uh, the uh, coding assignments that you'll do. And those example starts are uh, the exercises uh, at the end of the chapter in each book. Um, they'll sort of give you a... Um, uh, sort of give you some starter code and then you'll need to go in and sort of fill in the blanks and based on what the requirements are for each of the coding assignments that you do you can go in and make those um, changes there. Uh, sort of knew what jo uh, Mirac did they, they started giving a, a sample uh, a sample solution so there's also some sample solutions inside NetBeans uh, and so I'm going to mix the assignments up some of them the sample solutions will be available the project exercises, I'll talk about that in a second, do not have sample solutions, although there are some of those that I'm going to give you some example starts on. So you just sort of need to, uh, I would encourage you not to use the sample solutions if you, you know, as much as you can, try and work through the assignment on your own uh, for the, the book exercises and then for the, of course, for the project exercises. There are some sample example starts for those and then some of the ones you're going to need to code up entirely from scratch. Uh, there's not a, a starter uh, project, Java project there, okay? So the, the project workbook is the other thing is this link here, this uh, CSC projects workbook. So that is a, uh, that's a Word document that uh, basically it's just assignments similar to the book exercises and you've got some requirements there. And uh, so when you do an assignment uh, for each of the coding exercises, just be particular about if it's a book exercise versus a project assignment. And let's maybe look at chapter three for an example there. So I'm uh, looking at chapter three now. So notice it says complete uh, chapter code exercise, complete chapter code exercise three one. So the chapter code, that's gonna be an exercise in the book. It says now open your projects document and complete project three one and three two. So again, those project, uh, those project assignments are going to be inside this Word document up here. Uh, this uh, projects workbook here. Okay. So if you have any questions about that, uh, just let let me know. But just again, be sure that when you're reading the assignment, uh, you you're looking at book exercise. You know the difference in a book exercise versus a project assignment. Okay. Um, I have a sample submission here, what your homework should look like. Take a look at that. So for all the coding exercises, I only want the Java files, the .java files. Uh, that, that, that is the files that are in that end in .java. Uh, those are going to be inside for each of your projects you create. Assuming you're using NetBeans, you'll be working inside a project. There's an SRC folder that's inside each of um, those projects that SRC folder can say contains dot Java files and then also dot class files uh, again we won't get into this too heavy but uh, Java is a compiled language so when the dot Java files are compiled though they're compiled into dot class files and the, the class files are the, the compiled files you can't look at those with a text editor you can't see any code um, so the dot Java files are the actual code and of course when you submit to me that's what I need is those dot Java files so I can actually see your code and then of course I'm gonna also compile and run that code and, and that'll be how I grade your uh, coding assignments that you you do so if any questions about that let me know um, okay so here's the way the course is gonna go uh, basically we cover a chapter per week uh, go ahead and knock out this getting started assignment that should take like five or ten minutes and that's, again, this is an online course, so that sort of verifies that uh, you're a live person and you've logged into Moodle and you sort of know what's going on. You need to get that done by, I've got August 23rd here, so you've got about a week, five days to get that done. So go ahead and get that done ASAP. If you don't get that done, then you're in danger of being dropped from the class. In fact, I most likely will drop from the class. I'll probably email you and say, hey, are you live? Are you a real person? But I may not do that, just depending on how busy I am. So if I don't hear from you, 
uh, you very well may be dropped from the class. So go ahead and, and do the getting started assignment. All right, once that's knocked out, so again, the way we do this is basically a chapter per week. We cover a chapter per week, and each week you will have a quiz. Notice you can see the quiz here, and you will have a code, uh, a coding assignment, okay? And that's the code exercises, what those call those. Same thing every week. It's due at Sunday at lunchtime, so Sunday at 12 p.m. every week. Um, and and that, that's when that assignment's done. The assignment closes. Uh, the quizzes are open for the entire course. The coding assignments close Sunday at 12 each week. Uh, generally, as a, as a rule, as a general rule, I don't accept late work. If you email me first and say I'm having an issue or there's something going on, then um, I'll, I'll allow you to turn it in late, and then you may have some points, some late points taken off. But we've got assignments each week. If you miss one assignment, it's not a big deal. Um, so generally, there's plenty of work to, to, to do. Uh, it's just it's it's a uh, it's a lot of work for me to have to go back and grade previous code just because the code's somewhat sophisticated and it takes a while for me to process. Okay, what am I looking for here and what am I doing? So it's just much easier on me if I can code all the assignments at the same time. So that's generally why I don't accept late work. So I would say, you know, stay on top of your work. The entire course is open in Moodle. Um, so you can go through and work ahead if you want. So if you know you're going to have an issue coming up or you're going to be out of town or you got other things going on with other classes, work ahead and get those coding assignments done. Now, I won't grade them until they're actually due inside Moodle, but you can certainly work ahead if you like. Um, so that's that. The quizzes are hard. Um, you've got multiple attempts on the quizzes, so you can attempt those. Um, I, I think I may, may go in and limit those to three uh, attempts uh, just so people aren't getting crazy but they're the random quizzes and there's a, a a question bank for each one so just because you retake it you you're probably not going to get the same set of questions each each time in fact you won't get the set same set of questions each each time but you can take the quizzes multiple times so number one don't feel bad the quizzes are tough uh, so don't feel bad if you don't do well on them at least well the, the first time but I don't put a time limit on it so you can uh, you can use your book. You can use NetBeans to sort of paste code in and and, and verify things. Um, so um, that that's how the code, that's how the quizzes work. Um, that's all of that. Uh, screencasts each week too. So sort of the way we teach this class again, it's entirely online. Uh, if you notice, there's a, a screencast each week. Uh, a couple things on the screencasts. These are older screencasts. I did. They're a couple years old. They are for the previous version of the book. So the language in them, if I say, you know, chapter 15 and it's actually chapter 12, some of the chapters change. Generally, the content should apply to the chapter you're on, though. So just don't, don't let that throw you off if, uh, if I mention some chapter names or something like that. If there's any issues at all with those, uh, you know, or you feel like they're not right, let me know. Um, yeah, okay. That is about it content-wise. Um, again, make sure you have the fifth edition of the book. The fifth edition, not the fourth edition. We just changed that back in the spring, I think. So, uh, I mean, it's not terribly different, but the assignments are different, and it's it's new enough that you're just not going to be able to get by with uh, the fourth edition of the book. So make sure you have the fifth ed edition. Um, I've also got, like to mention, some writing exercises. We've got two writing exercises in this class. A lot of folks ask why this is a coding class. Why do I need to write? Well, in, in the real world, when you're out there coding and working on a team, uh, you need to be able to communicate with people. You need to communicate via email. You know, it's also, uh, it's also, um, it's also good practice and helpful if you're able to write about technology from a, a technical standpoint. Um, so you've got a, a podcast assignment where I ask you to uh, listen to a podcast and then you're going to, uh, based on some prompting, I do write a, a just like a one page paper on that, short one page paper on that. And then you've also got a diversity assignment where I have you um, uh, um, read, a, uh, read an article on diversity and technology. And then you've got, this is actually a forum assignment. It's not a, a paper you're going to turn in, but you can actually post on a, a forum and then uh, so you'll make one post and then you respond to one other person's post. Final exam, uh, no midterm, just one big fat final exam. And actually the coding assignment is not tough 
at all. Um, it's very similar to what chapter seven. Uh, now the final exam, the, the questions are, uh, there's two, or the, the quizzes are, there's two final exam quizzes, and we break that up into part one and part two. So those are just uh, 25 questions each. And then there's a final project you're gonna do, which is not terribly hard. Um, it's, it's usually, I mean, again, the idea here is you're doing a lot of coding throughout the class. So, you know, one coding assignment each week, of course, with multiple uh, projects or applications that you're building each week. So you're doing a ton of coding during the uh, semester, so the project's relatively small at the end. Okay, that is all for the class. Uh, again, my name is Mark. Um, just a little about me. I live here in Asheville. Um, I am, I'm a web developer by trade. Uh, Ruby and Rails is sort of my specialty. Java is not, although I've done a teeny bit of production Java coding in the past. I haven't worked on any large Java projects though, so some, if you get into some real sophisticated Java things, uh, it, it can be a little outside of my wheelhouse, but I, I can, we can always bring other folks in to answer questions if we, we need to, or um, I can usually help you out with um, sort of general Java questions. My goal in this class is not to make you a Java pro programmer. My goal is to teach you software development the idea is that, uh, so what I like to tell people is the idea is uh, you're here to learn software development and oh, oh by the way, we're going to use Java to, to, to teach that. So the, uh, my goal is the concepts that you learn and we focus on here are um, transferable to other languages too. So we're going to learn software development in a general way and we're going to use Java to do that. But these same sort of algorithms, ideas, um, 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 things that we do, we're going to apply to whether you're going to do PHP, Ruby, Python, C, some other language that you're going to be able to use. The concepts that we learn here, you'll be able to apply those to those languages too. Um, so that is all I have. So again, uh, looking forward to class. And uh, again, if you have questions, just let me know. See ya.